Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of Five Things That We Learned, the show where I go through all the major talking points of the previous Chelsea game. But firstly, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit that bell notification button and let's dive right in into it and it was a 2-0 win for the Blues in the West London derby against Fulham. Goals from Mikhailo Mudrik and Amanda Breuer 20 seconds apart from one another and having only scored one goal all last month in September and no Premier League goals. The first time of asking in October we've got two so yeah you know it's not that old saying in it you know you wait a long time for something and then suddenly two come along in quick succession um, and it was a really good performance from the Blues professional and it's a performance that had been waiting to happen and it finally arrived second half we dropped off a little bit but it doesn't matter the job was done we managed the game well and you know really really important confidence booster as well back-to-back -back clean sheets also not a single player in my book had a bad game so yeah look Positive evening, absolutely delighted with it. The fans were superb, but let's dive into it. And my first point, people, is Connor Gallagher. Now, he was superb last night again, given the man of the match. I mean, it could have been it could have been Moises Caicedo uh, as, as well. I thought he was brilliant in that midfield. In fact, all the, all the midfield three were, were absolutely superb. But Connor Gallagher, I think, has proved a lot of people wrong, including myself. At the start of the window, uh, summer window, I was like, Do you know what, this is a guy that we could probably sell. I wouldn't be bothered if he left. Um, I don't think he's got that much to offer. And I'm more than happy to hold my hands up like I think a lot of Chelsea fans are. Start of this season, he's been nothing short of superb. He's captaining his boyhood club. Uh, fair, fair play to him, living the dream. Um, and he's been brilliant this season. He's been really, really good. Started every game in pre-season. Uh, started every game in the league for us uh, this season as well. And he was superb last night. A, a little subtle change where Pochettino deployed him a little bit further forward. Uh, and Enzo Fernandez a little bit deeper. That made such a, such a big, big difference. And, you know, Gallagher is is leading the way for Chelsea at the moment. Just bring up some some stats from, from, from last night. Um, Connor Gallagher for Chelsea this season. Most duels won, most possession won in the final third, most possession won in the middle third, most tackles made, and most interceptions. He's been on it this season, you know. It's, it's, it's the man bun. It's the man bun edition of Connor Gallagher. He is... He is balling. He, he is balling. There's, there's nothing, be, nothing more than we can say than that. Um, he's been absolutely brilliant. It just goes to show what, what trust from the manager ca can do for you. It goes a long, long way in football, getting that trust from the gaffer. It gives you confidence. You go out there and you perform. When you've got confidence, you express yourself more and you, and you perform to a higher level. And right now, Gallagher has, has been absolutely brilliant. And on, on this current form, you know, you can't, you, you can't leave him out of the side. And that, that seems like a ridiculous thing to say, but you actually, you actually can't, you know, there, there's, you just can't, there's, you know, there, there's levels to it right now. And, and he is hitting, he is hitting that level. He really is. And he's surprised, he surprised a lot of people, but he's good for all phases of play. It's good for the defensive phase, good for the mid phase in the middle. And he's good for that attacking phase as well. It was a phenomenal performance on the ball and off the ball between the lines, defending the channels. It was a proper box to box performance from him and, and if he can continue doing that then then fair play he covered the most most uh most distance in the game as well T over 12 kilometers uh, of ground so he gets around the pitch he's been solid he's been solid in possession outstanding out of possession and you know what fair play to him uh, he's turned it around completely by the way and he's proved most of us wrong and he absolutely hands down deserves to be uh at this football club, he absolutely does. Really, really does. You know, you can't say one word, one bad word about, about him. You know, standout, um, standout performance from him. And I'm absolutely delighted for him. And long may it continue. And the balance on the midfield was absolutely perfect. Enzo Moore free roaming, Gallagher the most advanced with Caicedo sitting. And there's no coincidence at all that they all played well when the balance was absolutely spot on. But that is my first point. Conor Gallagher proving a lot of the doubters wrong. And, you know, fair play to him. He deserves his flowers and long may it continue. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him uh, this season, which is not really something I expected to be saying. But Conor Gallagher, congratulations, proving a lot of people wrong. So fair play on that one. My next point is, moving on to Mikhailo Mudrik. He is off the mark. A fantastic goal uh, from him. A brilliant ball uh, from Levi Colwell. Um, and you know what? In his 24th game for Chelsea, 
he gets off the mark. Great finish, composed one. Uh, and he played with confidence uh, for the rest of the half. A shame that he had to come off at half time. Felt something in his thigh. Uh, Chelsea t- took a took precaution and, and took him off, but they expect him to be fine uh, for the weekend. We all know, I've said it before, it's been a challenging time for him since signing uh, last January. But, you know, as I've said before, people, people know I back this kid. I believe in this kid. He is a top, top baller. He's got all the t- all the tools, all the talent in the world to become a really good Premier League player and a standout performer for Chelsea. He's got the work ethic. He's got the talent. He's got the obsession about reaching the top level. And all I've asked for is just give this kid a run of games, and and, and he'll show you what and, and he'll show you what he can do. And he's got that trust on the manager now. That's his fourth game in a row he started, and every game he's growing in confidence. And confidence is so important in football. I think he's a massive, massive confidence player Mikhailo Mudrik perhaps more so uh than most and you know what four games in a row he's been our most dangerous attacker in in most of those games you know against against Villa against Bournemouth against Brighton in the cup and then obviously gets off the mark last night and I'm just a shame we didn't get to see more of him but I'm actually delighted for this kid you can see his confidence is growing you can see the skill set he possesses he, he's got pace for days he burns past players he's direct he's got good delivery a composed finish which doesn't normally happen for Chelsea players uh, when they're in the box. And yeah, this is, this is just the start for him. You know, he needs that run of games and he's getting it. His confidence is growing and his performances are improving as a result. And, and do you know what? Who who would have thought that? Who would have thought that? You know, you get a run of games as a young player, your confidence improves, you get a bit of trust on the manager and then your performances start to improve. You're affecting the game. You're contributing in a big way to the team. So yeah, absolutely delighted for him. And he's going to start proving a lot of people wrong. Some Chelsea fans and a lot of the wider media will be eating their words on uh, on, on Mudrick because this kid is special. I promise you guys, this guy's going to the top and he's going to be balling for Chelsea for many, many years uh, to come. I'm, I'm certain of it. Uh, my next point that I wanted to raise uh, is um, Cole Palmer. He looks to be an excellent addition. You know, I know I spoke about Cole Palmer in previous editions of the show, but I can't not mention him again. You know, he, he was brilliant last night, starting more on that right-hand side. Um, his first start in the Premier League, uh, he sets up Amanda Breuer for the goal. Um, you know, given his first start last week in the Cup, first Premier League start this week, he got the assist against Brighton, and he got the assist for Amanda Breuer's goal, as I said. And he turned in a high-quality performance, his tricks, flicks, Key interceptions. He he seems to be overturning possession on a regular basis, um, and you know, we look like we've got an absolutely superb talent on our hands. You know, I, I really like Cole Palmer just because he's someone that he doesn't shy away from the ball. He always looks to get on the ball. He's always on the front foot. He always looks to try and make something happen every time he gets on the ball. And we have acquired a superb talent. Anyone that comes through the Pep Guardiola school of football, uh, learning from the great man. Uh, and someone that can hang around the Man City squad for sort of two to three years, contributing important moments to them, is is a top-level talent. And it's just about realising that talent now. And I think, you know, whether it's in that number 10 position, whether it's out on the right-hand side, we have found ourselves a position where Cole Palmer can excel. And the most important thing for Chelsea is just get Cole Palmer on the football pitch. Because if we get him on the football pitch, we're going to win more games and have a better chance of winning. It's as simple as that. I, I really like him. And... Yeah, once again, proving what an excellent acquisition uh, he looks to be. Uh, my next point I wanted to raise was the defence. Um, do you know, what? like, again, back-to-back clean sheets, as I was saying, but, you know, we're not conceding that many goals. And it was a bit of a makeshift backline last night. Cucurella coming in at right back uh, and fair play to him. You know, he's coming for a lot of stick. I praised him in the last video uh, against Brighton and I'm, I'm, I'm going to praise him again. He was really solid at right back, played really well. Um, and you know what? He's been through a lot and he's starting to win the fans back over uh, or certainly sections of the fans that were against him. And, you know, he fully deserves to be on a t- in the team at this point in time. He's not didn't put a foot wrong last night, was brilliant in the cup. And, you know, he's starting to show the player that we did spend that money for him, for him to sort of fit in on that right-hand side, the opposite side that he's, that he's used to playing in. Uh, fair play to him for that resilience and, and coming back from, from the adversity that he's faced uh, in his Chelsea career so far. And I think, you know, he should be starting again against Burnley on the weekend. There's no need to change uh, that back line or, 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 or the team uh, for, for for that matter. But yeah, no, he, he was absolutely uh, brilliant again last night. And I'm delighted for him. Again, another player that I've stuck up for a lot. Uh, you know, always said he's a good player. He just needs a chance, just needs just need things to go his way, things to drop for him. He's clearly been working hard on the training pitch. So yeah, 
absolutely uh, fair play to him uh, for that one again last night. And let, let, let's hope he can continue because we've got Ben Chill out. Poch doesn't really see Ian Martin as a left back. So a lot of it is going to be falling on Cucurella. I mean, even though he's not even playing at left back, but yeah, the, the, the point still stands. So fair play to Cucurella for getting his head down, putting the performances in and taking his opportunities when he is given them. And my fifth and final point is on the return of Amando Broya. Um, you know, I don't think many of us expected him to start. Porch said he was only going to be fit for about half an hour in the press conference, so he kind of uh, second-guessed us there. Um, but it's his return is, is so important. Nicholas Jackson was suspended for the game, obviously, um, and he got his first start since, fuck knows, a, a, a well, over a, well over 10 months. And it was a brilliant return to the starting eleven. You know, he could have, he missed a good chance in the opening moment, should have scored, but, you know, inside the first 20 minutes, he was on that score sheet. Um, and, you know, as well as the goal, the all-round display from Breuer was, was was really impressive as well, considering he's been out for such a long period of time. And him getting back to fitness gives gives us a much-needed boost in attack, different options in attack. We've got Nicholas Jackson to come back in. And now for the first time this season, we've kind of got a bit of a selection dilemma about who leads the line. And that, and that, can, only, that can only be a good thing. And given our goal-scoring problems so far this season... Having Breuer back playing is a huge, huge boost for us now. And hopefully him and Jackson, maybe you might see them play together potentially at times. Uh, and they can certainly push each other on to, uh, to to raise the level of their games. But having options in that centre forward position and having players that are fit, hungry and scoring goals can only be a good thing for this Chelsea side. And people thought he went off injured. He didn't go off injured. He was just tired. Um, you know, it was always going to be a tough ask for him to play 90 minutes. So that's a, that's a positive there that he's not injured. We fit for the weekend, and just whilst the morning injuries, more just kind of they went on off with what was described as a, a, cont a contusion, I'm not a contortion or a contusion, one of those two things. Anyway, I'm not really sure what that is, but Chelsea hope he'll be fit for the weekend. So hopefully that injury curse hadn't struck again. But yeah, Mudrick thigh seems alright. Breo wasn't injured. And uh, yeah, Caicedo's got a contortion or contusion, one of the two, which I can't remember, but I'm not really too sure what that is. But anyway, guys, those are the five things that we learned from Fulham versus Chelsea in the West London derby. As usual, West London is blue. We reclaimed that territory last night. Uh, but yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love hearing your thoughts, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you again in another video soon. Up the Chelsea and peace out, people.